Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome, one and all. Can't adjust this monitor, can you? No. No, you can't. Hey, Fat Stew, welcome. You can hear the washing machine. It's life. It's where I am these days. It's where I am these days. Let's tell Facebook that we are live. We're a few minutes early, so we're going to start in a couple of minutes. Come on in, everybody. Come on in. Let me just go and shut that door. Come, come on in, guys. Come on in. Come on in, everybody. Let's do this. Let's do this. Good evening, Stu, Stu, Who Man, Ghost Ops, uh, Ian, Sharon. Welcome, 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 one and all. Welcome. We're, we're a couple of minutes early. We'll start in a couple of minutes. I was thinking of making this a podcast as well. Anthony, Emma, Quaff, Gingerbeard Mark. Claire, Iconoclism, Bestie, Daniela, Didiasco, Claire, and Adventure. Um, let's watch the director's comments on the first show earlier today. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Great idea. Looking forward to this. Oh, well, we'll see how long it goes on for. Space Monkey, and Adventure Wire 71, Deke, Chutney, Steve, Ryan, Izzy, Kirian, Rob. Hello. We're a little early yet. I have my. Cream soda. That's my drink of choice. Flora, M's, DG, Tony. I got it. I got a cream soda on the go, guys. I got cream soda. Oh, it smells so good, doesn't it? Tweeny, Greg, Ryan, Random, Rob. It's going to be on the YouTube. Good evening, Matty. It's all going to be on YouTube. I'm thinking of doing this as a podcast as well. I'm going to get in touch with Acast and see if they're interested in putting this out as a podcast. Um, we're not started yet. We're a little bit early. Ming, Jama. We went until it's eight o'clock. It's eight o'clock. <clears throat> Doesn't get more pro than this. Hello, everybody. Welcome. My name is Ian Lee. This is the second part in, um, well, I'm going to try and do this. I'm not going to try. Commit, commit, commit. Uh, every Sunday evening, 8 o'clock, live on Twitch, you and I are going to watch an episode of the 11 o'clock show in order. I haven't seen them in 22 years. Never, I, wa I never watched them after they went out. I, I watched most of them as they went out. Um, but uh, fear, namaste. Thank you for the subscription. Um, but we're going to watch them Sunday evening, eight o'clock. If uh, you're watching this on YouTube, then come and join us live for free at twitch.tv slash Ian Lee. And if you're listening to this as a podcast, that means I've decided to turn this into a podcast. And again, you can come and um, watch it live Sunday evenings. You don't have to watch it live. Um, so, I mean, I don't really know how to do this. I guess we just dive in. This is episode two. OK. And for those of you who are new and who don't know, uh, the 11 o'clock show was, uh, uh, what, how did we have to describe it? 
We had a very set way of describing it when we were telling people about it that meant we didn't have to mention the title. Because after a while, you'd say the 11 o'clock show and people go, nah, I'm not doing it. Nah, I'm not doing it. So we had a legal lot of lawyers involved in the show. And as you'll see as we go on, some rules get broken. Some rules get pushed to the limits and therefore the rules are changed. So this show which launched Ricky Gervais and Sasha Baron Cohen and Mackenzie. I didn't know Mackenzie, he was, he was on it. Paul Garner and Alex Lowe and Jimmy Carr and all these people. This show totally changed the way that um, uh, British TV uh, comedy was made. They changed a lot of the rules. They tightened a lot of the rules. I'm sat here with a cream soda. I don't drink anymore. You'll find out why as the series progresses. Um... And it was my first ever proper TV show. I'd done stuff on live TV, which was an awful, awful channel owned by The Mirror. I guess it was owned by The Mirror. Um, and it was this terrible, it was run by Nick Ferrari, of all people. It was awful. And I did stuff on that, but it wasn't proper TV. This was a proper, uh, Ian, thank you for the subscription. If, you, if you're listening on, on podcast, podcast or YouTube, uh, people can subscribe. It's free to watch live, but if you want to subscribe, you can. If you've got Amazon Prime, you can link it to your Twitch account. You subscribe. You doesn't cost you a penny. I get money. It's that simple. So I've done some stuff on live TV, which I have got. I was never the news bunny. I was, I was in a competition to be the news bunny once. But so I did live TV a lot. And in my garage, I have a stack of videos about that high. Of, uh, of my live TV appearances. And I don't think I can ever show those because they're bloody awful. And even more offensive uh, than this. But I used to do it because they loved us doing it. I wasn't a very good stand-up. Um, so I couldn't really go out on the comedy circuit as much as a lot of other people did. I met some of the topless darts players, yeah. So I would just go and do this once or twice a week. And they, they liked me and my friend Justin so much, the live TV, stand-up live. They give us 25 quid and a car there and back now when you're signing on that was pretty decent but the 11 o'clock show was my first gig it's the thing that made me right made me in inverted commas i know it's all kind of whatever but it's the thing that started my career if i hadn't have done the 11 o'clock show um i wouldn't be I wouldn't be, I'd, you know, I'd be doing whatever. What was I going to do? So I mentioned yesterday that I, I auditioned for the 11 o'clock show. And my agent at the time um, said, yeah, I'm aware of it, but I don't think you're right for it. And I went, I could just, I was handed this fax when I was leaving a radio station that told me about the 11 o'clock show. And it kind of, this is going to sound weird, right? It kind of glowed. When it was handed to me, it kind of, of glowed. I knew this was it. I knew this was it. And from a very young age, I'd, um, from a very young age, I'd had an image of me stood with a microphone in a grey suit surrounded by people from about 15. So for 10 years, I'd had, just had this image, me with a microphone in a grey suit stood in front of an audience with an audience behind me. I remember it was an audience behind me and I just had it. And the 11 o'clock show, the audition, and I talked about the audition in episode one, right? It, it, I shouldn't have got that job because I had no experience. I wasn't that the funniest person that they saw for it. Just, I just kept getting through stage after stage. And it was no real shock that I was getting through stage after stage. It was no real shock. It was just like, okay, I'm at this stage now. Oh, I'm at this stage now. Oh, I'm sat on the set and I'm hosting it. The original hosts were going to be Brendan and Fred, Brendan Burns and Fred McCauley, and they wanted a third. Who was the third person they tried? Oh, I think they tried Sean Pye before. I think they tried Sean Pye as the third presenter. They did a pilot. It was going to be Sean Pye, who is a writer and a comedian, not Jonathan Pye, Sean Pye. I've just remembered that. I'm pretty sure it was him. He was the third presenter, and it just wasn't quite gelling. And um, so they said to me, do you, do you want to have a go? Or I may have said to them, do you know, I could, I could do that. All right, yeah, we'll try you. And I did a pilot uh, 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 and I got the gig. Um, 
so yeah, the, the audition, I, I, I just kept getting further and further. And I'd already decided that this was going to be my last shot at fame for a while. My last shot because um, I was skint. Hey, Fiery Squirrel, squirrel thank you for the uh, gift of a sub. Welcome, CJ. Welcome. Um, I was skint. I was in really bad debt. I was living, I was 24. I was living with my mum. Um... Uh, and I was like, right, if this doesn't happen, if this doesn't happen, I'm going to give up on showbiz for three or four years. I'd just done some work with my dad, who I wasn't getting on with, but I'd just done some work where, um, but hey, Boily, uh, as a prop man, my dad was a props man. And so I'd, I'd done some filming in Pakistan with him for three months on a film called Jinnah, which I'm in. If you if you look very carefully, you, you won't spot me, but you can see me, but you won't know it's me because I'm wearing a Christopher Lee prosthetic. Um, and uh, I'd also done some, I'd also done props on a weird TV series for, B for, channel, for BBC where it looked at what would happen I mean, it looked at what would happen if there was natural, if there were disasters. It hypothesized, and one of them that was the Millennium Bug. They also did one, and this is the only job I, as a props man, I did on my own, and I was so out of my depth. Dan, thank you for the subscription. I was so out of my depth. The only show I did props on on my own was this show about. I guess it was. It, we were on a train. Was it about the Channel Tunnel fire or was that something different? We were on a train and here's the thing. I wasn't good enough to be a props man and my dad just totally dropped me in it. And one of the ADs working on that show was the guy that used to bully me at school. And the night before, I, I suspect he did this deliberately. The night before, I got very drunk. We were staying in a hotel. I got very drunk and I did a little bit of cocaine with him. This is like two in the morning. We have to be up at seven on set. And so at seven on set, we're at this, we're at a train museum. And I'm there just throwing up in the bushes because I'm wasted. And this guy who then went on to, um, Gareth Unwin was his name. I think we can say his name. Uh, he went on to produce The King's Speech became a millionaire and he was my school bully so I'd, I'd done a few things like that and um in pakistan i'd worked with a really nice guy called campbell mitchell and uh pakistan was intense and insane and maybe we'll talk about that at a later stage and um it was like right i'm gonna i'm gonna do i'm gonna audition for this show and if i don't get this show I'm going to stop and I'm going to do props for two or three years because it was good money, like 250 quid a day. It's good money. I thought, I'm going to do that and then I'll see about getting back into it. And I just kept getting further and further into the um, auditions. And then I got the gig. And I remember quite far into the auditions, quite early on, actually, into the auditions, Campbell phoned me up and said, I've got a job for you. I'm doing a film. I think it was a film about Barbara Windsor. And um, what does a props guy do? He does every, basically every, he, she, everything that is on the screen, they are responsible for. I couldn't do that. Certainly couldn't do it when I had a hangover and a cokehead. Um, and Campbell phoned me up and said, I've got a job for you. I, and it was really generous of him to offer because I, I was still rubbish. And I said, all right. I said, I said, no, I didn't say all right. I said, do you know what, Campbell? I got this TV show that I'm trying out for. And... Um, I'm going to have a go at this. I'm going to have a go at this. This is what I want to do. And he wished me the best of luck, and I got it. The rest is history. So, hi. So, this is Series 1, Episode 2. Now, these this is the 1st of October, 1998, guys. 1998. Now, here's the thing. The show, when it went out properly, so this series went out in September of 98. I kind of think... The real series didn't go out, it went out like May of 1999. So it was a big old gap. I was signing on at the time. I was a stoner at the time. I'd done a little bit of coke, but not a lot. But I had a taste for it. I had a taste for it. But I was, 
a stoner. And I thought I was smoking weed and no one was knowing. But um, I was later told that everyone could smell it. My dressing room and is it Barrymore's? Someone else's dressing rooms both stank of weed all the time. <laughs> all the time. Terrible. I don't drink or take drugs or anything anymore. I'm, I'm clean and sober. I had 13 years, then I had a break, and now I'm nearly two years. So almost 15 years totally clean and sober. But that's where it was at the time. But this first week seems to be Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And I'm trying to remember why. I'm wondering if something had happened on the Tuesday. Something big had happened. I don't know. Anyway, the premise of the 11 o'clock show was it was all written and filmed on the day. Written and filmed on the day. Um, not all of it was. There was some stuff that we had up of our, um, up our sleeves. And I was brought in to make these little VTs, these Vox Pops on the street where you go up and ask people silly questions. But I, I was kind of dragged into the, dragged. I was kind of put into the studio and they started using me more and more and more. Um, and I'm surprised having watched the first episode yesterday, we're going to do this every Sunday night at eight o'clock, but I did watch, we did one yesterday. Having watched the first episode yesterday, I'm surprised how much I was in it. I was in it a lot more. Um, and I thought, was Steve Coogan on it? No. Uh, John says, was the show was a bit Chris Morris, wasn't it? Yeah, it was that sort of thing. It was that. So written, performed, filmed on the day, the way it would work. I'll, I'll talk about my Vox part. Let's get in. I'm talking too much. Let's get the volume up a little bit. How's that volume, guys? Is that all right? Gary Glitter. More Chiba theme tune. Good volume. So the main hosts are Brendan and Fred. Thursday, first week, could me that me sat on the edge. So already I'm sat on the edge, right? I'm supposed to be the third wheel. And I, I wish looking back retrospectively, they kept me as the, the third wheel. I, 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 I got the Ali G to one side. Ali G to one side. I think in the first episode I got the I know in the first episode I got the biggest laughs doing the stuff on the street. The stuff in the studio, none of the stuff in the studio I wrote. I might change a line here and there, but hardly ever, because I was terrified. None of the studio stuff was written by me. It was all written by these amazing team of writers, which grew and grew. We had people faxing in jokes when the series really kicked off proper. But this was a two-week pilot run of six episodes. Um, and uh, I didn't write any of the stuff in the studio. I can see all of your questions in the Twitch chat, twitch.tv slash Ian Lee. I will get to them at some point. Um, I will get to them at some point. I promise. This is going to be honest, guys. It's going to be honest and open. Um, the stuff out on the street, I had a hand in writing. And obviously a lot of it was improvised. But we would, I would get into the studio. Uh, I would get into the offices which surprisingly were in the building next door to Talk Sport. I don't know if they were for this series. This series, we might have still been using the talkback offices. I think we were still using the talkback offices. Um, but so I would get in about eight o'clock and me, James Bobin, who was the director, and Leo Martin, and me and James, and maybe someone else, Simon Wilson at a later date, um, uh, who went on to be the head of comedy at BBC, we would just go through the papers and find a story that we could do Vox Pops on. And then James would write questions. I would chip in. As, as I got more confident, I would write more and more. But it was primarily James. And it was... But th there was a lot of improvisation. But the real magic in those Vox Pops was we would go out and we'd film... You had like an hour and a half to film it two hours tops, then I had to get back to the studio to rehearse the show. Everyone else was rehearsing the show in the studio and I had to get back. So that James would then go off to an edit. And this was why it was so clever. He would then edit the two hours into three minutes of very funny video. 
Um, no, 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 no. Angela says those two hosts, the Scott and the Australian, really not very likable at all, are they? Fred McCauley's wonderful. I love Fred McCauley. And Brendan Burns, I've talked about Brendan. I like Brendan a lot now. At the time, I found him very, very intimidating. I still find him uh, intimidating. I still find him scary. Um, but no, no, no. I, I mean, this is 1998. Here we go. You watch, when they introduce me, I'll probably do a thumbs up or pull my face down to my chin or do something. Um, I'm going to do something dumb because I just don't know what to do with my body. I have no idea what to do with my body or my face. It's Thursday, the 1st of October. It's Channel 4. This is the 11 o'clock show, and I'm Fred McCauley. I'm Brendan Burns. Hello, I'm TV's Ian Lee. <laughs> it was all good, wasn't it? TV's Ian Lee. I used to get called that a lot. And that was the first time it was ever said. First time it was ever said. Same suit. Harry Thompson, who produced it, had this grey suit. And he wanted, he got really upset when I changed suits in the next series. He had this idea, and I think he was probably right. He wanted me to wear that suit for my entire career and never clean it. And he said, I just had this vision of you 20 years from now wearing the same suit and it's filthy and it's tatty. I'd have loved that. I'd have loved that. But TV, uh, Justin says, I remember thinking it was cool you were such a nerd. Thanks, man. TV's Ian Lee. That's the first time it was said. And then I, I still sometimes get called TV's Ian Lee, despite not really having been on TV. I got rid of the suit. Who, man? I chucked the suit and that was stupid. But um, but listen, there's 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 just silence. There's just silence as I introduce myself. No one knew who we were. People knew who Fred wa was. People knew who Fred was. Oh. <laughs> it's Thursday, the first of October. It's Channel Four. This is the eleven o'clock show, and I'm Fred McCauley. I'm Brendan Burns. Hello, I'm TV's Ian Lee. <laughs> <laughs> now I don't know if you. I mean that, sir. Terrible. <laughs> And hello, I'm TVZ and Lee. Titter. Titter. Do you need the volume turned up, guys? Is the volume a bit quiet for you? Fred and Brendan got on. We all got on. We all got on. We all got on. Watch the gardening show Ground Force on BBC One tonight, but apparently the ratings went up by three million when the word got out that the presenter wasn't wearing a bra. <laughs> three million viewers just because the presenter wasn't wearing a bra. Well, if it's got to be done... <coughs> It's got to be done. <laughs> Jokes. <laughs> By the way, these are all from my own personal VHS collection. These early ones, I take these myself. Um, I would go home and watch it. I would watch it. And I did watch this, the first couple of series. And I remember having a conversation with Daisy. Um, because Daisy never watched it. And I thought that was weird. And I didn't watch it out of arrogance. I don't enjoy watching myself on TV, but I, I watched these and studied them as they went out to learn, to see what I was doing wrong, where I was getting a laugh, where I wasn't getting a laugh, bits of my body language that I was uncomfortable with, um, stuff that I, I, I liked, stuff I wanted to keep, stuff I wanted to junk. So I would go home and watch it. Certainly this series and the next series, probably the one after. I would go home and watch it. And, and also, I, I, here we go. Um, I enjoyed... I, I, I enjoyed watching myself on TV at the time because it was a novelty, because it was exciting, because it was a thrill, because this was what I had always wanted to do. This was what I had always wanted to do. And suddenly, I'm doing it. So most of these I take, but this series I probably taped. As we get later on, there are some episodes missing, but my mum taped them because my mum was really, really proud. Of course, she never told me off for anything I did on this. There are only two things that I got told off for. One was when I had to mime smoking. She didn't know I smoked. I was a smoker at this point. I was smoking roll-ups. Um... And there was a bit where I had to smoke in it. She hated that. And there was a bit where I made a joke about the Queen Mother. And I got a phone call the next day and she said, you, 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 went, you, went, you went too far there. 
you went to. But she taped all of these. And um, Mark, who got in touch with me on Twitter, very kindly digitised them and put them all up on YouTube. So, but there are there are a few episodes um, missing. So, <laughs> up three million already. Yeah. So October the. We never got as many as three million. I seem to remember the most we ever got in terms of viewers. I seem to remember 1.7 million. It wasn't a big show. It wasn't a big show. I don't think, did we, we might, we might have got to 2 million once. We might have got to 2 million, but I think it was 1.7. And towards the end, um, towards the end, no, quite early on, the producers realised we got more viewers if Ali G was in it. So they would stagger. Ali G's team did less and less partly because they were getting recognised, but partly because they didn't want to carry the show, which is how they saw what they were doing. And um, so they would stagger. So the, the episodes without Ali G, we'd get around a million. And the ones with, with Ali G um, would, 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 would get like sort of 1.5, 7, something like that. First International Day of the Elderly, the start of the pheasant shooting season, and the swearing in of the elected Nigerian president. Quite a day in anybody's book. And here in the 11 o'clock show, we squeeze all its news into a single minute. Sir Paul Condon denies that police have a problem with racism, claiming they do it really well. <laughs> now that's a good joke. That's a good joke, right? Some of these jokes are awful. Some of these do not stand the test of time. Some are awful at the time. Some are offensive, right? It's going to be a little bit of homophobia. It's going to be a little bit of racism. Get ready for it. Okay, get ready for it. And then some of them are brilliant. That's a good joke. Um, okay, okay. You're having a timeout. Timeout. Do that again. You get blocked. Timeout. Timeout. Guys, come on. Uh, we'll, get, we'll talk about Sasha when we get to him. We'll talk about Sasha when we get to him. Meanwhile, the BBC deny accusations of silence in the Lawrence family. My son. Okay, sorry, we seem to have lost Mr. Lawrence's sound there. Stephen Lawrence. I mean, it's not a joke about Stephen Lawrence. Um, so I've got a cat crawling in front of me now. It's not a joke about Stephen Lawrence, but still, it's Elephant and Castle. Ah, interestingly enough, right, that's Elephant and Castle. And here at the bottom of this slope, there's a ramp that goes up. That's the shopping centre. Uh, um, that's where we, where eventually we did most of the Vox Pops because we had people that we met people who had a, um, a Vox Pops face. They had a Vox face. We became really good VFX, VFX 86. Thank you for the subscription. We had, slope, we got really good at recognising who would be who would be good to approach and who wouldn't be good to approach. But we did a lot there. And up there in the top was a bingo hall. And I would be there with a microphone, a radio mic. And one day we got the, the head of the bingo hall, the manager came out and said, uh, is there any chance, um, didn't you do them outside the post office near London Bridge Station as well? Asks Shand in the chat. Yes, yes, we did. Um, uh, the, the manager or a security guard or something from the, the, the bingo hall came out and said, um, guys, is there any, how long are you going to be? Probably about another 35 minutes. Is there a problem? It's just that your, your mic is operating on the same frequency as ours and it's coming out over the bingo. Came out over the bingo. <laughs> so Stephen Lawrence. The BBC deny accusations of silence in the Lawrence family. Elephant Castle My again. Son. It's a joke about the police. It's a joke about the police. It's not a joke about Stephen Lawrence. That's fine. I'm fine with that. It's a joke about the police. Welcome all the new viewers, by the way. Um, this will be put up on YouTube at some point. I suspect I'm going to put it out as a podcast as well. 
Um, and if you uh, want to subscribe, if someone could type in the subscription information into the chat, that would be really helpful. You don't have to, it's free, but if you want to subscribe with, with um, Amazon Prime, link it to your Twitch account. I get a few quid, doesn't cost you a penny. Otherwise, you can pay to subscribe or you can donate bits. We're all good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, now. This is this is the video. Not quite sure what's happened here. This is this is. This is here we go. Hey, I found a whistle. Thank you for subscribing. I really, really appreciate it. As Tony Blair and his wife decide to renew their wedding vows, observers say Sherry Blair is not looking her best. Come on, come on. <laughs> come on. Come on, guys. It's a, a gag. Police crack down on shoplifters, but sex shops are to be made exempt as customers often leave with a bulge in their clothes. 11-year-old eco-warrior threatens more dirty protests after getting his entire school to take part in a mass bedwetting. 11-year-old... Um, so that'd be, that'd be... That was 22 years ago. That'd be uh, 33 now. Uh... Um, and there's Ali G. And look, it's Ali G looking very, very um, straight. You wouldn't think that much of him. As he gets further, as we get into the next series, the clothes get more and more outrageous. But Coming up in the show, the Channel 4 voice of youth raps with Tory that's, MP. That's Andrew Newman there in that little uh, video there. Andrew Newman was one of the producers. Didn't really like me, didn't really want me on it but then grew to like me, and then we had a big falling out. Um, he then went He then went on to be, I think, commissioning editor at Channel 4, head of comedy at Channel 4. Then he was really high up in BAFTA. I don't know what he's doing now. I think he's got his own production company, but really clever. He basically, as far as I remember, these are my memories, right? He pretty much came up with the Ali G character. I... Th I, I Someone will tell me that's not not true. He 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 pretty much he certainly refined it. If he came up with the name, Eddie Taylor. What about Holland? Will they still speak in? in Dutch. Don't tell me. Um, <laughs> oh, give me a clue. Dutch. And that's beautiful, right? Oh, beautiful. The Ali G stuff is... Tommy Vance gives us a blast from the past from this day in history. Who's that breaking the news? Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> it's just cut to a picture of um, David Icke reading the news. Jesus Christ. Here we go. Right. That is that next best thing. <laughs> Very funny. <clears throat> Here we go. Now, it might be one of my Vox Pops now. Let's see where it goes. It's an ashtray on my table, I think, yeah? In America today, the clean-up operation after the havoc wrought by Hurricane George has begun in earnest. In Mississippi and Alabama, wind speeds reached up to 150 miles an hour, putting out many of the state's burning crosses. <laughs> Despite the damage to property, human casualties in Alabama have been light. We were lucky, said the governor. <laughs> I mean, some of these jokes, and it's, it's not... I mean, they're not even that... Sorry, my cat's sticking around. It's not even that funny at the time. Um, he executive produced the Sasha show. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, and it's not getting big laughs. Later on, the producers had absolutely no qualms about beefing up the laughter. And um, I don't think they did it here very much. Because there's big... Well, in fact, they can't have beefed up the laughter because otherwise they would have done something with my intro. So I think that was going to be... D dude, what are you doing? My cat's being an idiot. I think that was going to be part of the thing was that they were going to write and film the show on the same day and they weren't going to do anything with... Um, they weren't going to put in canned laughter. Later on, they certainly did put in... There's canned laughter... Laughter from the audience. They moved it around and boosted it. Stu says in the chat, did the audience ever get prompted to laugh? Yeah. Yeah, you always at comedy shows, you'd get a floor manager. Go, ah, kind of tell people when to clap and to laugh. Um, uh, Podry says, as writers, did you guys all look and hope to emulate the day-to-day -day in Brass Eye? I like the 11 o'clock show, but them other two shows have been immortalised. I think the 11 o'clock show was before Brass Eye. 
Well, certainly after the, 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 maybe it wasn't, maybe it wasn't. I don't know. It was certainly after the day to day. It was certainly modelled on the day to day, and I was not so much in this. That's who I was channeling in that series. Um, it brass I was before the eleven o'clock show. Was it? Thank you, Dave. Um, uh, what was I saying? I was ch channeling Chris Morris there before the uh, later on. I mean, they were writing it like Chris Morris stuff for me. And I wish someone, I wish someone, because I didn't know what I was doing, right? And I wish someone had taken me to one side and said, right, do you know what? We're going to spend a week. We're just going to spend a week reading scripts. Um, and uh, we're, we're just going to try and find your voice. I didn't find my voice until about five years after the 11 o'clock show. I'm only just getting it now. I'm only just getting my voice now. Uh, Pat, you're going to have to move out of the way, darling, because I'm trying to do this. Local hospitals have reported a few minor injuries. Seven or eight people. You can count them on the fingers of one high and... <laughs> <laughs> Brendan's got very strange hair there. For, for, for a man who's going bald, that's a very strange hairstyle. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Deputy Dog. <laughs> as for Georges, it's been downgraded from hurricane to tropical storm. Although, as far as we're concerned, it lost much of its power when we found out that it was actually called Georges with an S. Not George, no, George. George we could buy. George is rock. George is a mate. George buys you a beer. <laughs> George serves it to you with a lacy dolly underneath. <laughs> Are you calling my hurricane a poof? <laughs> It's a satire. It's a satire, but still unusual to hear that word, huh? I did tell you. But it's a satire. It, it's a you know, joke on that kind of... Well, no, 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 it's not getting him cancelled. Because that is what tough guys would say. That's what tough guys would say. You're calling me a... You, you're calling me a... That. You're calling me a... So that's what it is. Um, but, yeah, it's unusual to hear that word. <laughs> Yes, it twists the other way, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Hurricanes should be called things like Dave or Steve, but look at the names of this year's storms. Alex, Bonnie, Charlie, that's Charlie spelt E-Y. Fred's been, like, doing TV and comedy for years at this point, and you can tell, man, you can just, um... You can tell he's so much more confident, he's so much better at reading the auto cue. He knows exactly what he's doing. He's in complete control of him. The material may not be the best, but he, he's got far more confidence than me or Brendan had. But I quite like Brendan's uh, kind of laid-back attitude. You can bet if it was spelled I-E, the dot the I with a little smiley circle. <laughs> Danielle, Errol, Francis, and now Georges. It reads more like a guest list at a wine tasting. How hard would it be to have names that really scared people into action? Hurricane, my girlfriend's just missed her period. <laughs> Let that one sink in for a little bit, shall we? So these are hurricane titles that are supposed to scare you. That's quite funny. Is a photo of Jagger in the background, yeah. Um, is a photo. <laughs> hurricane, was that lump there yesterday? <laughs> hurricane, that story where that woman had spider eggs laid in her cheek and they hatched and crawled all over her face and I was really frightened. That's nice. That's nice. That's nice. That's nice. <laughs> me. It's only me now. Yesterday, the IRA made their first appearance at a party conference since the Brighton bombing. Oh, I'm going in with the IRA. Not my strongest... Not my strongest point. It looks like I'm growing a moustache there. I'm not. I'm not. Look at that hair. Here's, here's what people don't get. Right? I'm playing a character there. I'm doing a character, right? And no one has ever got the fact that I'm playing a character. That isn't me. I mean, yes, I had that hair, but I'm playing a character. Um, and no one ever, no one ever got that. Anyway, here we go. Go straight in with the IRA. Yeah, here we go. Leading her cheek and the hatch and crawled all over her face, and I was really frightened. <laughs> here we go. Yesterday, the IRA made their first appearance of the. Look at that shirt as well. That's like an inch too big, that shirt collar. 
party oh, conference right, in Brighton of bombing. And Tony Blair met with Jerry Adams, who claimed that he could not order the IRA to give in their weapons. Here's me earlier on film on a street now. <laughs> So if Jerry's unable to deliver IRA decommissioning, the so-called troubles in Northern Ireland are not as over as we first thought. Do that again. Where is that? Where's that church? Where is that? I don't know where that is. What? I'm here to find out what rubbish the ordinary person on the street has got to say on the subject and whether they'd know what to do if they came face to face with a bomb. There is... Right, that's Borough. That's the post office. We we're talking about that. Is that Borough? Anyway, yeah, that's B B Borough, just opposite Borough Market. We used to do a lot of the post office there. Got some really good Vox faces. I suspect at some... I don't remember this one. I suspect at some point I'm going to carry a bomb. I suspect talk to, to help the situation will be to have Catholics and Protestants co competing in a TV style sort of game show like It's a Knockout, Gladiators or Krypton Factor. Would, would that be a good idea, a good way to solve the problems? Maybe, yeah. What about 15 to 1? I don't know what 15 to 1 is. Sorry? I don't know what 15 to 1 is. It's a competition where there's, there's 15 people. This is improvised. These bits are improvised, right? And I, I start to relax. So I've 15 to 1. I don't know what it is. So then I think, I think, and I do this now, I think I'm about to go into really specific details as to what 15 to 1 is. I used to love doing stuff like this. What about 15 to 1? I don't know what 15 to 1 is. Sorry? I don't know what 15 to 1 is. It's a competition where there's, there's 15 people standing behind and William G. Stewart stands there and asks each one of them a question. In the first round, there we go. One round. In the third round, they nominate each other. So That's funny! This is what I used to like doing, right? was going off the script, off the questions and improvising. And that went on for ages. That would have been four or five minutes of me telling him the rules of 15 to one. I bet he comes back with no. I've got 15, they're down to three people. The one is the winner, 15 to one is the winner. That sounds fine. Would it have... That's funny. That's funny, right? Whimsical, exactly. Whimsy. Before it got the show as the series progresses gets meaner and meaner and very nasty. This is this is this is nice and charming. For example, if we sent the Chuckle Brothers over there. There we go. So we're gonna send the Chuckle Brothers to Northern Ireland. Fifteen, they're down to three people. The one is the winner. Fifteen to one is the winner. That sounds fine. Would it help, for example, if we sent the Chuckle Brothers over there to do a cabaret with a, a unionist theme? I don't know. I don't know. There's gotta be extremes on both sides who are not gonna enjoy it. So <laughs> I mean, would it help if we sent Joe Pasquale or the Chuckle Brothers over there? Would that help the situation in Northern Ireland? Might help. Which would be the most successful, Joe Pasquale or the Chuckle Brothers, you reckon? Chuckle Brothers. But the IRA may become... I mean, <laughs> it's not a great one. This is our second day, and we would have filmed that in the morning. And um, it, this is basically now just me doing gags and people going, yeah... Uh, you know, that, that's what the majority of this seems to be, is me saying some funny things, the other person going, yeah. Now, here's what you've got to know. This is before Big Brother. This is before any of those kind of things. So there was still, in 1998, there was still a naivety around TV. And a bloke in a suit doing a posh voice and a camera... People would still kind of trust it. People would still trust it, which is how we got away with a lot of it. Obviously, a lot of people hadn't. This was episode two, so only one episode had gone out. Um, so, evening, David. So, people didn't recognise me. It became harder as we got more recognisable, but but not impossible. Um, we just picked people that looked like they would never watch Channel 4. And, um, I mean, this isn't this isn't particularly funny, any of this, is it, really? But it's the party. Who do you think they should get? Let's go back. The Chuckle Brothers over there. Would that help the situation in Northern Ireland? Might help. Which would be the most successful, Joe Pasquale or the Chuckle Brothers? You Did anyone get take it the wrong way and get physical, says Sloop? Yeah, one person, one old guy um, saw me in the shopping centre in Elephant Car said, I know who you are, you prick. And he went to punch me. But he, he, punch, he tried to punch me in slow motion. Um, no one got physical. I got abuse. I got, uh, you know, told to F off. And I got people laughing. Got a lot of people laughing. Talk about trigger happy. Um... About halfway through one of the series, 
we got told to change the style of the Vox Pops. Dom Jolly worked on this show. You'll see Dom Jolly a bit later on. We got told to change the style of the Vox Pops. And then about six months later, Trigger Happy came out. Good. Chucker Brothers. But the IRA may become a political party. Who do you think they should get for their party political broadcasts? Father Ted or something like that. <laughs> Father Ted would be good. Oh, yeah, he's dead, isn't he? I forgot that. One of the new measures they may introduce is bomb disposal training for everyone in the country. If you trained me to defuse a bomb, wouldn't you be also training me to make one in the first place? No. <laughs> 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 I like that for two reasons, right? Because he take. I'm a, I think I'm about to give this gentleman a bomb. Um, it, 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 he was being very serious, that guy, being very, very serious. In one of these Vox Pops at some point, we, we voxed Mad Frankie Fraser. Um, but he, irrelevant to this. He's being very, very serious. And I'm, this is what I do on the radio show a lot now, is I play dumb. I love playing dumb. I love playing dumb. No. Enflix. I love playing dumb. And I, I do it a bit here, but I hadn't quite got the hang of it. I wish I'd done it more. Wouldn't you be also training me to make one in the first place? No. <laughs> you got a mock bomb. Oh! Said an old man holding a bomb. Let's cut the green. Quickly, quickly, one, yes. That was just in time. That was exactly the right one to do. The green and yellow every time. Now, you've just saved your friend's life. You've saved everyone's lives here. The fruit stall, everything. How do you feel about that? That's quite good, because I'm an electrician, so I'm proud of that. <laughs> well, you you, you should have got it right. Well, not really. It's completely different bond disposal. <laughs> That's a great line. You should have got it right. Nah, not really. It's completely different bomb disposal. Imagine. Imagine that. We can laugh at this. We can laugh at this. Yeah, of course we can. Sue's asking if this was today, armed police would be there in minutes. Can we actually laugh at this? Yes. I cannot believe that I'm stood opposite Borough Market, where, of course, there was a, a horrendous um, terrorist attack, handing people a bomb. I'm wearing goggles. Um... <laughs> Shit. Still got that watch. Same style watch. I'm, I'm, there's now, in, I'm in IRL life trolling. I'm now, it's a close up of a bomb, which is very obviously taped to me. Now this is a different time, right? This is before, before suicide bombers, before suicide bombers. But even I'm shocked by this. I think this looks funny. <laughs> this is Ian Lee for the 11 o'clock show. I'm wearing a bomb. <laughs> pre 9-11, pre 9-11, pre 9-11. Ian, uh, I think we should let the people at home know about bomb disposal. Yeah, I said on the film that if you want to dispose a bomb, you cut the green and yellow wire. I haven't got a clue, I just made it up. I don't really know, sorry. <laughs> And that was, I haven't got a clue, made it over to me, no, sorry. I quite like that voice. I don't know why I stopped doing that. Um, yeah, it's, it's suicide bombers, yeah, noi, in this country, in this country. Suicide bombers in this country. Um, of, course, of course, we've had kamikaze pilots, if you want to go back that far. But yeah, in this country, the majority of people had not heard of suicide bombers. Um. And, it, and it's different from electricity. Yes. Good. In a bid to get a life back in track, Louise back Woodward, in. the woman who brought new meaning to the phrase bouncing baby boy. <laughs> Louise Woodward, of course. She was a regular kind of mention on this. She was a nanny in America who um, was charged with murder or, or, or su uh, the, the, the homicide or manslaughter. Um about um it wasn't coke at this point it wasn't coke at this point okay okay serenity wild that's great thanks very much indeed let's crack on. had her first lecture at the south bank university where she's studying for a degree in law 
Louise is hoping eventually to become a lawyer and is looking forward to being just an ordinary normal student. Now this, I didn't like, here's the thing, right? Doing this stuff, um, that's the first one this episode that's probably made me go oof. Um, I had nothing to do with the writing of the stuff in the studio and I would come in and would kind of just read it a couple of times and do it. And I never, even later on, I never had the confidence. Stu, no, 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 Stu, I'm not. Here's the thing. Stu's saying, oh, no, man, fast forward this shit. No, 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 no. We're going to watch all of it. We're going to, well, here's the thing. This, here's the thing. I told you. I warned you. But also, if I skip this bit, right, the next bit someone else might not like. And the next bit someone else might not like. We're watching all of it. There's no point. Uh, thank you. Are you sitting comfortably uh, for the subscription? Stu says, I just mean the Louise Woodward stuff. No. No, because because you don't like this, right? The next bit someone else might not like. We, we, we skip all of it. We either do all of it or we skip all of it, right? Now, I'm not saying... I'm proud of all of this stuff. I'm not saying um, I stand behind all of this stuff. Not at all. I think it's interesting to watch it. Also, on a personal level, I'm finding it really cathartic. Because this is like, yeah, but it's sort of weird. I didn't know. Stu, you have the option to, to not watch. You have the option to not watch. You have the option, if you're listening to this on the podcast, you have the, the option. I'm not apologising. I'm not said sorry yet, Generation 2 Games. Thank you, Lady Bobbins, for the subscription. You have the option to stop listening or to stop watching, right? I'm going to watch all of this because this happened. This happened. This went out. This is part of my history. And it's, so did we get any complaints? Loads, but they kept most of the complaints uh, away from us get most of the complaints away from us. We'll talk about the complaints um, later on. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about the complaints later on because a lot of them kept away with us. And also, kind of when the series started properly next year, that was like the beginning of internet forums for us anyway. I like that this discussion is happening as well, David. Definitely, definitely. Um, uh, kind of like in 1999, people set up some internet forums and that's when it got actually quite upsetting for me because people would, would write on the internet forums that um, I was shit and they've not been timed out, Stu. Why would you be timed out? No one's timed out. Um, so we'll, we'll talk about the internet forums and we will talk about the, the, the posts that we got and, and things a little bit later on. So this, this happened. Apparently her first day has been rather difficult when people asked, what did you do in your year off? She had to reply, I shook a baby to death. <laughs> Maybe Stu was right. Thank you, David, uh, for the subscription. I don't stand by that joke. I can't stand by that joke. Um, I, I can't stand by that joke. I would never make that joke now. At the time, I was 25. I was fearless. I was an idiot. Um, I said it. I mean, what, what, what can I say? I said it. I said it. I'm surprised by that. I don't remember that. I thought it got nastier. Or we're going to see Paul Garner in a minute. I thought it got nastier as we went on. She was found innocent. Yeah, she was found innocent of murder. An ordinary normal student. Apparently her first day has been rather difficult when people asked, what did you do in your year off? She had to reply, I shook a baby to death. <laughs> Straight face, holding that face to camera. Holding that face to camera. Holding that face to camera. Look at that. Holding it. Holding it. Holding it, holding it, holding it. Holding that face to camera. <laughs> At first, Louise's fight to get a place in a law course didn't go too smoothly. These are the scenes in her hometown of Elton where her fans heard the news that she hadn't got into her first choice, Loughborough. Paul Garner. come to a decision and on this occasion, we will not be offering Miss Woodward a place at Loughborough University. <laughs> oh, 
Okay. That was Paul Garner. Um, um, that was Paul Garner, who's a good friend of mine. And he did a lot of funny Vox Pops and films on this. Then he got the boot, I think. Great writer. Um, he is Chaz Hodges' son-in-law from Chaz and Dave. Evening, Ollie. And Mrs. Ollie. God, we're only eight minutes in and we've been going for an hour. Right. <laughs> Eventually, she got a place at South Bank University, and at Freshers Week Ball, she vowed to hit the floor with the kids and get smashed off her skull. <laughs> the new slimline Louise has opted against the traditional greasy student food available in the college canteen in favour of a strict diet plan she learnt in the States. It's the one where you have a shake for breakfast, a shake for lunch, and by evening, you could really murder something. I mean, Jesus, I'm uncomfortable. I'm uncomfortable. It's horrible, isn't it? It's horrible when it's mean and it's nasty. But here's the thing. Um, can't, Paul Garner did a lot of stuff for Chris Morris. Yeah, Paul Garner did a lot of stuff for Chris Morris. It's interesting. Some of you are finding this funny, which is okay. Um, and yeah, 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 this is it. You, 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 you get a joke and you just keep going for it, keep going for it, keep going for it. Um, oof, should be the universal reaction. I mean, I f how do I feel watching that? I feel really uncomfortable. I feel a little bit upset, a little bit nauseous. I'm not going to say sorry for it again. I got told off for saying sorry too much in the last stream. Um, it's uncomfortable. What boots am I wearing? What am I wearing? Look at look how skinny I am. This was before cocaine, and I am so, so skinny. Um, what's the name of that producer with the dreadlocks? He came and saw the show and loved it. And he... She didn't... She was found innocent, Podry. Um, what was the name of the guy with the, the... The producer guy with the dreadlocks? He came and saw the show and described me as... Um, no, TV producer, Levi Roots. Oh, what was his name? What was his name? Comedy producer. Did the trombone sketch. Victor Lewis Smith. Thank you. Victor Lewis Smith. Uh, he came and saw the show and he liked it. He liked it. He was a fan of mine. He described me as a funny cadaver, I think, or something like that. Um, so let's carry on. <laughs> Good luck to her in a new career. Let's hope she makes a killing in the city. <laughs> The German government announced this morning that it's melting down three million euro coins because of a design fault. Every day it seems that there is more chaos at the heart of the EU. So let's go over to our European affairs oh, correspondent, Wim van der Land, to learn of the latest lunacy that's being sprouted from the mouth of Brussels. Now, he's actually out there in Brussels, not live. They would have had like two days out there and filmed all of that. Biff, baff, boff. Bish, bash, bosh, I think is the phrase. Um, and he, of course, is the voice of the captain in the Octonauts. He's the voice of the meerkat. He is the Geordie in Alan Partridge. He is a very wealthy man. Here today in Brussels, the European Commission Simon announced Greenall. that to be in line with current European practices, each member state must now produce one chocolate bar and one fizzy drink, the name of which is a rude word to another country. <laughs> the Austrians that, will produce... That's funny! That's fine. I mean, it turns out we were part of the problem and that's, you know, I'm, I'm to blame for Brexit. But that's funny. Listen to that. So that's, that's a delicious, delicious gag. And with current European practices, each member state must now produce one chocolate bar and one fizzy drink, the name of which is a rude word to another country. <laughs> the Austrians will produce nip kiss, which I cannot even tell you what it means in my language. And if you British were to come to my country, I would like you to eat shit and die. <laughs> then if you are thirsty, you must now drink from my dirty cock. What I'm really laughing at as well is that there'll be someone under there lying down or kneeling down, passing him up the new things. Player well known. Thank you for the subscription. Three months. Thank you, thank you, thank you. How do you like the taste of that, yeah? <laughs> is, is that true, Ben? Sadly, uh, no. I have been pulling the wool over your bollocks. <laughs> 
then why are you saying this? Because we're Europeans and we hate you British. <laughs> but I'm not British. I don't have a bowler hat or an umbrella and I've never been buggered by my headmaster at school. <laughs> There's time yet, Brendan. <laughs> Isn't it funny? That got a gasp. The being buggered by your headmaster at school got a gasp. Um, no, nothing else says so far. <laughs> this... Right here is the new Cosmopolitan with Pamela Anderson on the oh, front. Nothing Pamela wrong about Anderson. that, you might think, except the Cosmopolitan have admitted that the picture has been airbrushed to make her breast look smaller. And if you look closely, as I have, <laughs> you'll see for yourself. It's a growing trend. In fact, a number of people are now suggesting that this picture of Anthea Turner on the cover of Tatler has also been doctored in some way. Well, we can settle the issue. The 11 o'clock show has exclusively obtained the original undoctored version of the photo, and here it is. <laughs> It's a nice gag. I mean, none of these are really stand out funny. There's some, there's some, I mean, come on, come on. <laughs> well, we'll be back after the break when you can see this. Ali G coming up. Yeah. They call me Mr. Bombastic, a reggae fantastic. Come back in the second half because I'm going to be talking to Teddy Taylor, MP, about Europe. Keep it real. <laughs> Genuinely slightly worried. Uh, no, 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 no. We're not having that language, Jack. We're not having that language. We're not having that language. It's a timeout. One more and it's a ban. All right, one more. Uh, I'm genuinely worried um, about um, whether I'm going to get a legal challenge from Sasha for showing this. I, 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 I um, Instagrammed that I was doing this and I, I linked him in it. And I'm really worried. Sasha is the, the one I think who could get litigious about me showing this. Sasha is the one I think could be litigious. More so than the channel, more so than Ricky, um, maybe Daisy, I, I don't know. I don't know, so we'll, we'll have to see, but that does worry me a bit. Now, we might have one of these interstitials where we come back from the break and it's me has um, like a, a, a newspaper service. Stand it! Stand it! And these were great fun, fun to film, right? We filmed at, uh, uh, the roundabout in Hammersmith and it was me stood there, stand it! We filmed for about two or three hours and I would basically, with my excellent peripheral vision, would be able to see people coming and I would make up a headline about them. I don't know if it's on this. It was certainly in the last one. Hundreds of school children stolen by women wearing glasses and brown wax jacket. <laughs> That's quite funny. That's quite funny. Welcome back to the 11 o'clock show, bringing you today's news nicely. And thanks very much for coming back after the break. We're glad you weren't tempted by Phil Collins Live by request on ITV. After all, who wants to listen to a middle-aged bald git wittering on? <laughs> M says it's very trigger happy. We did it first. We did it first. Europe chaos in store. <clears throat> that was the headline on the front of today's sun as the Bank of England warned that things can only get worse. But does everybody really understand what European Union will like? Be like, sorry. Here to help us figure it out is Channel. Isn't that funny? They didn't retake that because they were so. It was a real. It was a real thing to film to write and film and edit a comedy show on one night. So we filmed this, I didn't go out live, we filmed this at half past seven at, at night, half seven till nine. Then they had two hours to edit it. And quite often they would be editing the second half while the first half was going out. Um, uh, but I'm surprised they didn't pick it up there. I'm surprised they didn't pick it up. Four's official voice of youth, Ali G, talking to top Tory MP Here and Eurosceptic Teddy Taylor. Goes out to the cool up top. Europe. Here we go. 
Wicked, we is here with Teddy Taylor, MP for Southport, and he is a Tory, and he is talking to us about Europe, because it's time we know about this Europe tin that we're hearing about every day. Isn't that funny? Two days after we, uh, two days after we, we, we leave Europe, this, this. So who else is in Europe first off? Well, the countries that are in Europe, for example, are countries like Spain. Like Now, on, on there, they will have a lot of written questions that are gags. They'll have some a lot of straight questions. The way you would do this is you would you'd have someone for half an hour, 40 minutes, and a lot of it would be, um, would be straight interview. And then you'd throw in the really ridiculous, ridiculous stuff. Germany, like okay. France, then like Finland. Uh, and you'll find there's some countries, of course, that haven't joined. Reading the script. And the interesting thing is... Most of them is crap countries, though. Well, I don't know if they're crap countries. <laughs> some of them are very good countries. Is Jamaica in Europe? Jamaica's not there in the Commonwealth. And it's really is that not racialist, though, that they is not Well, no, they say, basically, that only very funny. can join the European countries. <laughs> An awful lot of the decisions are made in what's called horse trading. You support me in this one, and I'll support you in this one. What do you mean, with horses? No, horse trading, just basically. Look, Ali, I want to get this thing. I don't want a Euro plug. So will you vote with me to stop the Euro plug, and I'll vote with you in something else? And where did the horses come in? <laughs> the horse might be saying, no Euro plug. In the exchange, they'll say, well, we want more money for this, or more money for that, or more power for this. So the horse... <laughs> the horse is at a meeting? Where? <laughs> So will it be all right to kill someone like you can do in Denmark? <laughs> well, the MPs in on the interviews. No, no. Did the interviewee know beforehand? No, what? No, they just turned up. They, they told they were being, uh, being interviewed for a, the phrase we had to use, right? Because we couldn't say the 11 o'clock show. We, uh, we want to interview the 11 o'clock show. We would say... Um, the Ali G stuff is very dated, says Rob. I think this is hilarious. I think this is hilarious. Um, you, what we would say is the, the lawyers, when we were asking, all the Vox Pops, after I'd interviewed them or spoken to people, a researcher would then ask them to sign a release form. And we would say we are filming for a late night topical comedy, to, late night topical comedy show. Late night topical comedy show. We kind of mumble the word comedy. Um, and um, with emphasis on topical. <laughs> because about a year, shortly after this, the name 11 o'clock show became synonymous with taking the piss out of people and, and, and winding people up. Did it get harder to get people over time? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it did. Um, one of them countries, Denmark or Sweden. Well, Sweden, they don't think they, they've got lots of members they, there, but they, the only thing yeah, is... Yeah, that's the one. So what about the pornos? Would that be still be legal in Amsterdam? For well, it's, very, it's going to be very difficult indeed, quite frankly, as the borders go down to try and Real good accept Real a good difference in policy. So will I still be able to buy stuff with, you know, dogs and women or whatever <laughs> in Amsterdam? Is that going to be illegal then? Oh, no, that's still... You'll still be able to do that. But the whole question is, is it going to have the same law for Europe? So we could start getting pornos of that quality. <laughs> you could, if the European... Council ministers decide that the same rules should apply throughout Europe. Aren't there any good things about it, though? Like, like I don't know, the ladies, like, everyone knows we've got a lot of mingers here. And, you know, you get from Swedes, whatever, and because they is easier and less frigid. Than... Fuck, you know. You can see... You can see why Ali G took off. He's brilliant. I'd met Sasha before. I'd met Sasha twice. Uh, I'd done an open spot at a comedy gig he ran in a pizza restaurant in West London somewhere, like West Kensington or something. And uh, it, uh, uh, Ardlo Hanlon was on the bill. I was the open spot. I was very nervous and I threw up. I remember it really well. I was very nervous um, and uh, I threw up. And I did an open spot and I killed it. 
And he was doing it as Sasha. Dennis Pennis was before this, yes. Uh, he was doing this as Sasha. Uh, yeah, he was doing the stand-up gig as, as himself. And I killed it. And I did my whole 10 minutes and I killed it. Killed it. And I walked off and he came on and goes, do you guys want to see some more of Ian? Ian, come back. And I didn't have any material left. I'd used it all. So I, I had to do fi like five minutes of just nothing. And then I phoned Sasha up afterwards and um, he said he'd get me in for a paid gig and he never did. This is maybe two years before this. And then I also saw him at the comedy club that was in Hammersmith. Big, big old comedy venue. Closed down now, of course. And he was doing an act. I saw him in the toilets afterwards and he died on his ass. Right. But he was doing an act where he was dressed as an Arab, just dancing. So like... Da, 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 da. Uh, and that was it. I can't remember. It was a very weird act and he died. Um, so I've met him a couple of times. <clears throat> <laughs> South End and see is the place where the loveliest girls are. Yeah, they look around, man. <laughs> proper laugh. He's proper laughing there. Every now and then you see him proper laugh. I gotta say, it's the nicest place in the world, South End. It's no, lovely. it's nice, but the girls is not rocking, man. <laughs> if you want to join Europe, make sure you have a B R I A N. Know what you was doing before you throw it all away. Big shout. Done that long time ago. Well done. Respect. <laughs> Yeah, that's nice. Yeah. <clears throat> Matty said, did we ever see him while filming the show? Yeah, this stage we did, in the build-up to this, we've been working on this all summer. And, um, yeah, saw him a lot. Saw him a lot and got on really well with him. But then very, very quickly, pretty much by the next series, the, 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 the Ali G camp. I mean, they were, they were separate anyway, but they were all in the same building. But then I think they even had, might have even had an office somewhere else. They were separate. That's my cat. They were separate, and we didn't really see much uh, of the um, Ali G people. Uh, so, so, so it was Ali G, Dan Mazer. I don't know if Dan was producing it at this stage. I think Andrew Newman was producing it at this stage. Um, but then Dan Mazer kind of took over, and um, yeah, yeah. After months of anticipation, today finally saw the launch of Sky TV's digital television service. Now, viewers lucky or rich enough to have coughed up for a decoder unit will have the choice from a seemingly infinite number of new channels. But just what is digital TV? Oh, this I seem to remember being funny. I remember a gag about the about the milk channel. And I, there's a gag as well about a Dutch version of the 11 o'clock show, but I don't think that's in here. Patty, could you get out of that plastic bag, please? Patty! Thank you. Here we go. Well, digital radio has been on air for a month now, and listeners say the sound quality is quite amazing. For instance, here's John Humphreys on this morning's Today programme. And if you listen carefully, you can pick up the most incredible detail. Lord Hattersley was the deputy leader of the old Labour Party. Were things really that different then, uh, Roy Hattersley? I think we're very different as far as lobbyists are concerned. I happen to believe that the Prime Minister is one of the most honest and one of the most... <laughs> I remember the real magic roundabout. It was wonderful, Dougal and Zebedee and Brian and all the boys. Anyway, here's the weather. <laughs> but the... I don't know what was happening there. Was he taking heroin or masturbating? What was he doing there? I don't I really understand that. But also, notice how he was doing coke. That wasn't coke, because he was carrying on talking. Um, he was chopping coke. Okay. But notice how slow that gag is. That's a slow setup for a not great payoff. Material and screen match the quality it's broadcasting. The new Milk service channel. will feature Milk channels channel. such as UK Gold 2, which will broadcast leftovers from UK Gold 1. So good news there for fans of Triangle and Tucker's Luck. <laughs> Do we need so many new channels? We've got our hands on a decoder and a program guide, so we're going to flick through and make our own minds up. Doesn't this seem... Just like, I thought he was slapping his arm for a vein or masturbating. He couldn't do coke while he was talking. Anyway, doesn't this seem odd going, well, look, we've got lots of new channels come in. 53, what's this, Brendan? Uh, this is the... <laughs> the audience loving this. This loving is the this. Uh, Civ channel. 
round-the-clock coverage of sensational sieve action. <laughs> See popular foodstuff sieved and sorted by the country's that leading That looks like Paul Garner on the left. Sieve channel. Round-the-clock coverage up. of sensational sieve action. <laughs> See popular foodstuff Could sieved and Garner. sorted by the country's leading sievers. <laughs> oh, cool. Hang on. Try 76. That's the milk shopping channel. Things you get to drink. Garner. Now, of course, milk Charlie Skelton. Handy. Charlie Skelton. Who, do you ever see that program, Space Cadets, with Johnny Vaughan? Um, it was a great program, and they bottled it right at the end. I bet they got complaints, where they basically tricked a load of thick people um, into thinking they were go going up to space. Um, they were flying to Russia, and actually they were just flying in a circle for four hours. Hang on, Johnny Quiz in the chat is saying you auditioned for it? No. Um, anyway, in Space Cadets, they had a stooge who was on the flight. They never left the studio, and that was Charlie Skelton. That was Charlie Skelton. Really clever, funny, odd bloke, but funny, brilliant. I mean, odd. I was, I was always really scared of the writers. They were a couple of years older than me. Johnny Quiz, he was in your audition. Gosh, the writers were a couple of years older than me. They were so clever and so fast. And I was just this lanky, I was just an idiot. I didn't I had no idea what I was doing. Imposter syndrome, completely I I imposter syndrome. Um, and I found them really intimidating. Available in several size containers. The most popular right, being Morgana. these. Now this is the full pint version because it's a large full pint. And this is the half pint version. Uh, so cool because it's roughly half the content of what's in this. Now John Gaynor from the Milk Marketing Board, these are very popular sizes with the consumer, aren't they? Very popular indeed, particularly, particularly the pint. I mean, the pint is the Rolls Royce of carton sizes. Right. People like the pint. Not so big and clumsy as something like that would be, they can get their hand around it. Now you say the Rolls Royce of cartons, but the Rolls Royce of bottles has always been this shape. Now, this one is the gold top, so cool because it has a gold top lid on the white body, and that always reminds me of the broadcaster Chris Evans, actually. <laughs> <laughs> he looks not unlike um, Bonnie Langford as well. That's but true. That, yeah. but that's one of the great things about milk, it can resemble so many different celebrities. celebrities. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's nice. That's nice. I like all this kind of charming, silly, surreal um, whimsy. I like the whimsy. As the series goes on, we get we go away from the whimsy and we get nasty. But it's a bit dull. Uh, well, how about ninety six? That's the three D writing network. <laughs> what are they writing enamel. Uh, how about ninety six? That's the News Gold channel with Tommy Vance. Oh, lovely Tommy Vance. These are written, as far as I'm aware, by Rob Moore. Rob Moore was certainly in charge of it. He may not have been at this point, actually. We'll look at the credits. Maybe Rob wasn't involved in it at this stage, but he certainly came in later and was in charge of, of these bits. Rob Moore was a lovely guy, still a lovely guy. After the show, we'd go and, we'd go and stand on the balcony of ITV and smoke a spliff. Um, and uh, then, you know, get a little buzz on and then go in and be part of the the vibe. Hi, my name is Tommy Vance Lovely and Tommy. this is my News Gold. Gold! It's ten years ago today and the Olympic record books are smashed with hammers of truth. Drug-busted Ben Johnson is banned, but plucky Linford squirts only the purest urine into the tester pots. <laughs> He's cleared and promoted, but only to second. Nice try, Linford, but next time, why not take some drugs? They make you go fast, like a wolf. <laughs> oh, man. Um, that was lovely. Tommy Vance was great, and I spent a bit of time with Tommy later on when he did the new slam, I think it was called. So it would be the start of the show. He would record it backstage, behind the set. So you'd be behind the set, and then you've got probably about that wide, that wide, a foot, two feet behind the set. And um, I would I would be backstage waiting for the, I would be behind the set in this gap, this two, two foot wide gap. And Tommy would be there recording his, um, his new slams. And man, I wish I'd spoken to him. I'm more. I mean, I got on with him. He was a big fan of mine, but I wish I'd spent more time with him. I really do. And who's that breaking the news? Jesus Christ. It's David Icke. Not quite, but it's the next best thing. That should have got a big laugh. It's 1978, 
and brrr, it's the Cold War. But no one's colder than Yorgi Markov. Why, he's dead. <sighs> Stabbed by cunning commies with a poison-tipped umbrella. Ouch. But do we care? Only because it's a cool way to die. Holy Is shit. Is it a bird? Is it a plane? Hey, it's a plane, of course. On this day in 1968, <laughs> Boeing introduces the biggest jet yet since the dawn of time. They look great, but you wouldn't catch me in one. Do you know how much they weigh? No. Nor do I. <laughs> From crazy planes to just plain crazy, it's 1958 Anno Domini, and the kids have gone hoop loopy. America is hooked on hula. They say it is safer than drugs, but try doing this at my age. <laughs> I'd sooner have a spliff. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. And now it's time for what the papers ought to say. Slow, really slow feature that just isn't funny. Slow. So slow, isn't it? It was announced today that Comic Relief were to give £46,000 to a group of Scousers to research the effects of negative stereotyping of Liverpudlians. George McCain is quoted as saying in The Telegraph, during the Beatles era, the city tended to be regarded as hip happening. And what he ought to have said was... The night the Beatles made any cash, they left and went to live in Sussex. <laughs> oh. Oh. Not, this is not funny. More TV programmes are made about Scousers than any other region, and the reason is that they are what you see on screen. Interesting, delightful people. Scousers make cheap extras for TV comedies because you don't have to spend money on tasteless makeup and wardrobe. <laughs> <coughs> oh, quite a lot of... Dave, David on the chat says some of these fall a bit flat. Quite a lot of them fall a bit flat. I mean, the hit rate... In terms of the gags, he's not great. And even at the time, you know, he's not great. Liverpudlians oh, complain they are routinely and unfairly portrayed in a bad light. When they're not taking drugs, they're stealing. And when they're not stealing, they're running around with gangsters. And don't forget doll fiddling. <laughs> but to be fair, the group has received them. Liverpool jokes, uh, you know, Liverpool jokes. Money, so uh, Brendan's dyslexic. So we're all reading this. When we're in the studio, we're reading it, right? It's all on auto. Q. Um, uh, it's all on auto cue. And um, Brendan was dyslexic and we didn't find out until he got in. It wasn't the producers didn't know until he got in the studio. So he had trouble reading what was said. He starts wearing glasses, I think, next week to try and improve his dyslexia. Um, he may be in tomorrow's episode or, 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 or next week. And um, yeah, it was it was the, 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 I remember a lot of people in a, a, a Channel 4 kind of banging their heads and scratching their heads, going, what do we do now? He didn't tell us. He didn't tell us. And there was a lot of people concerned about how they were going to make it work, Brendan. They do intend to spend the cash on positive propaganda and civic pride, both of which, incidentally, are running in tomorrow's 3.20 at Kempton. I have to say, I was, I was, I, 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 I've, I've met Brendan since. I still find him intimidating, and he, he doesn't understand why. He's an intimidating guy, and I was terrified of him here. He, he, he was... You know, I won't mind me saying, I think he was a bit of a caner in the way that I would become a caner later on. And um, the kind of only instance I'd had with him was, was up in Edinburgh a year before, 97, and I was doing a show with Mackenzie Crook, uh, Charlie Cheese's jacket of badges. No, it wasn't the jacket of badges. What show was it before the jacket of badges? Charlie Cheese. Maybe it was jacket of badges, I don't know. Um... And I wasn't great. And there was a real buzz around Mackenzie. Bob Mortimer came to see him. And a lot of people were talking about Mackenzie because he just had it. And I didn't. We were sharing a place with Charlie Chuck and he told me off for swearing at the audience. Can't swear at audience. Can't swear at audience. Um, and I was having a really tough time up in that Edinburgh. And because I just wasn't, I just didn't find, it took me so long to find my voice and find what I was. And, and, and also Mackenzie was doing so well. I was doing so badly. We we're in the same show. It was his show. And I was kind of um, uh, like the sort of compare, but doing a character. And I couldn't get it. Couldn't get it. Couldn't get it. And um, 
one evening in the bar that we were doing the show upstairs, a very, let's say drunk, let's be generous, and drunk Brendan Burns came in, I think with Matt Lucas, and went, you're on, I can't do the accent, you're on live TV, you FNC, five points. And terrified me, bullying and intimidating. He's, he's, he's apologised since. But I always struggled around Brendan. So being on a set with him, I was terrified. Terrified. Mainly my thing. That's mainly my issue. <laughs> News today that Monica Lewinsky claims to have found God when I think we all know it's his only excuse for that girl to get down on her knees. Guys. Guys. But <laughs> There's the, there's the head to the th thing. I don't know what to do, so I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. But for, she sucked a president off. Come on. That was me. Now, let's see if I don't think I get a laugh there. <laughs> but for, she sucked a president off. Come on. But for the latest on the Clinton story and all the American news, we go over now to Rich Hall live in Washington. Rich. Hi, everyone. I'm standing in front of the United States Capitol building. Look at that bad boy, will you? Man, that makes me feel patriotic. Uh, Monica Lewinsky yesterday asked to go on the Oprah Winfrey show, and Oprah turned her down out of some sense of moral outrage. By the way, Oprah's new movie, The Beloved, opens this weekend in which she does a nude scene. So see there? Eh? The irony bus runs about every three minutes in this country. <laughs> right elsewhere, uh, Mike Tyson Rich is out in Las Vegas undergoing Rich Hall, the inspiration for Mo from The Simpsons. Yeah, you're the second person to say that. Um, I love you. Thank you for that. Evaluation to determine whether he should box again. Psychiatric evaluation to determine whether he should be beating the hell out of other people. Now, they asked him why he wanted to fight again, and he said, I'm not making this up, a man needs to eat. <laughs> anyway, he claims he's broke. Uh, some actress sued him for libel, claims that he called her a maliciously manipulative money grabber and sued him. Maliciously manipulative money... You ever seen Mike Tyson talk? I'm pretty sure he didn't say maliciously manipulative money grabber. I just said malicious there by accident, you know, like a mouthful of cookies or something, just going, mmm, honey, these are malicious. These are great. <laughs> All right, I gotta go. See you later. <laughs> well, it's good to see so many men laughing. Good, hearty British laughs. But how many of you men are laughing on the inside, huh? Not men. Oh, I remember this. this report in the mouth. I remember this about depression. Um, okay, only women get periods. That's great news. Uh, thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Catherine. Um, I suspected that was something. Um, I remember this is one of the few bits I, I remember. It's about depression, and it's me wearing a coat that I think I got from a charity shop. There's a brown when I'm out and about. I wear a brown coat that we got me and Andrew Newman bought in a charity shop for two quid. And I, it's it's talking about um, like walking through treacle and stuff. I don't know if it's very funny, but I, I, I remember and they throw darts at me. It doesn't get many laughs. It's not that funny not today. It says here that British men are the most depressed in Europe. According to the mental Royal health. College of Psychiatrists. Let's deal with mental health. Of course health. they are. They live in Britain. Apparently, the primary symptom is, and I quote, a depressed mood. Roscoe says, did I have depression back then? Yeah. I wasn't right. I wasn't right. I wasn't right. I was self-medicating with a lot of weed, smoking weed every single day. I was confused about my sexuality. A lot of shame around my sexual behaviour. Did not know at that point, did not have the courage at that point to say that I was bisexual. No, not too personal at all. This is what this is for, Roscoe. That's why if you're listening to this on a podcast, come and join us on a Sunday night, eight o'clock. You can have these chats. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, Sunday night, eight o'clock, twitch.tv slash Ian Lee, twitch.tv slash Ian Lee. Um, I was a mess. I was a mess. I don't have the coat. I don't have the suit. I got rid of all of it. I was a mess. I didn't know what I was, who I was, uh, I, 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 and so I was not happy. Um, I was not happy. I don't think I was on antidepressants. I had been on antidepressants. I'd been on Prozac before then. I'd been on Prozac before then, yeah. That's very <laughs> revealing. So if ever you've sat at home feeling depressed and wondered what's wrong, it's because you're depressed. <laughs> the Guardian asked sufferer Philip Wood to describe his condition, and he says... 
I call it my black heavy overcoat of pain, impossible to take off because the buttons are soldered together, my body aching from all the vain attempts to rip it off. It gets worse. He goes on to say, he describes his depression as rather like walking through a vat of treacle whilst being attacked by red-hot darts, fleeting but so painful. Can you imagine how this must feel? Let's ask Ian Lee. <laughs> Chelsea Boots. So, so how do you feel, Ian? I feel really bad. It's not the coat, that's I not the coat. I feel a bit like I'm swimming through an ocean of sinister toads who are nibbling at the shins of my mind, the fluorescent teeth of hate, while an enormous caravan driven by gypsies and tears trundles up and down the jewel carriageway of my soul. <laughs> you get yourself out of the tray of treacle, it'll all seem better. That's about it from us. Oh, that's weird, I seem to remember that going longer than that. No, it all, thank you for the subscription. I seem to remember that, that um, lasting longer than that. Right, let's cover the names. Good night, Thursday, October the 1st. You were quite a day. Good night, special lady. Good night. <laughs> I'm dribbling. You see me? I'm dribbling. That was me. I'm drooling. Good night, Thursday, October the 1st. You were quite a day. Good night, special lady. Good night. <laughs> Here we go. Let's see some of the names. London Studios. They don't exist anymore. GMB moved there. Um... Um, 11 o'clock show was shite. Thank you, washing machines broke. You don't have to. I tell you what, let's make it. Let, let, let's make it easier for you. Um, you don't have to watch. You don't have to watch. You don't have to watch. If it was shite then, why are you watching it 22 years later? <laughs> Can you imagine how that must feel? Let's ask Ian Lee. Um, so the London studios, it wasn't the big studio there, it, but um, we saw a lot of famous people there. I remember going in the, um, the canteen, not the canteen, like the, like the little coffee area, and there were all these rockers, and it looked like they were extras from Spinal Tap, but it was Jimmy Page and Led Zeppelin and their entourage, and they were filming, like they were like doing like a TV special where it was like robes and cushions and stuff. Um, no, we're not, watch we're not watching two. No, this was downstairs. We're not watching two. Episode. Don't know these people, don't know these people. Michael Matheson, um, okay. Leonora Martin, who was good friends with Leo. Um, Kath Pick, I didn't really know very well. Production team, Lizzie Flat, Helen Weeks. Helen was, uh, was a runner and she was great, I really liked her. Um, Daisy Donovan, obviously. Don't remember any of those. <laughs> Writers Ben Cordell, we discussed Ben Cordell, Steve Cochran, Paul Garner, John Gordillo. See, I don't remember John Gordillo being there. These were the main writers, right? And as the series went on, we got more and more writers. But these were kind of the core throughout. Um, and uh, yeah, Sean Pike, they were all great. They were all great. These were the main writers. As the show went on, it became people could fax in jokes. Mackenzie becomes involved in the next series, I think. I think. Um, yeah, so we got another four episodes before we get to series two, Mackenzie. But yeah, people would fax in jokes. Um, I think you got paid like 25 quid a joke, 50 quid a joke maybe. 25 quid a joke. So that's Damon Beasley went on to write and produce the Inbetweeners with Ian Morris, who hasn't started working here yet. He also produced, but didn't write, The Persuasionist, the sitcom uh, that I did. James Bobin, he wrote and produced My VTs. Um, he went on to direct the latest Muppet movies, the Dora the Explorer movie. He's the Flight of the Concords TV series. He's a big shot in America. Jamie Glassman. Uh, I, I remember Jamie. I don't really have a lot of... Um, things about him. John Gurney, I don't remember. Simon, I do remember. And um, Simon, I, I, I didn't really get on... Um, I, don't, I don't really remember Simon. I, I know some stuff, but stuff that I can't say. <laughs> Peter Fincham, who co-owned Talkback Productions with Griff and uh, Mel, went on to be the head of ITV. Steve Smith, a very nice guy. He, he was the studio director, so didn't really have much to do with him. <laughs> Andrew Newman, who we've talked about. Dan Mazer. So Dan Mazer was working on, on the Ali G stuff then. Because I don't think he was involved in the studio. He must have been working on the Ali G stuff. <laughs> Bruce Robinson, Harry Thompson. Lovely Harry Thompson. Wrote a brilliant book about Peter Cook. Um, he came up with the idea for the show. Uh, they think it's all over. 
um, uh, just just a brilliant, lovely man. He's the guy that liked me and gave me the job. If it wasn't for him, I would not have I wouldn't have a career now. He gave me the break that that I so desperately needed, even though I was rubbish. <laughs> Talkback Productions, Channel 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 1998. There you go. That's it. Let's um, pause that. We don't need to see that again. So that's it, guys. That's it, guys. Uh, that's your lot. That was episode two. Um, who was the warm-up back for the 11 o'clock show? Hey, quiet bloke. Che cheers for the cheer. Know it all. Thank you for the subscription. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I miss you. I miss that. Who was the warm-up act for the 11 o'clock show? We had loads of warm-up acts. We had Jimmy Carr. Robin Ince did it a lot. Didn't get on with Robin at the time either. Someone else. I found everybody intimidating. Everybody intimidating. Robin Ince, uh, I, I, I really didn't like. I, I didn't start liking Robin until about three years ago. And now he's a really, I, I think he's a really nice guy. Gemma, thank you for the subscription. Much, uh, much appreciated. Um, uh, Jimmy Carr, Robin Ince, uh, DJ Lazy, thank you for the subscription. Get your subscriptions in, guys. It's really appreciated. If you've got Amazon Prime, you can link it to Twitch, and then you can subscribe for free. I get a few quid. It doesn't cost you any money. It's money that you wouldn't get. Actually, James, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, if you haven't got Twitch, you can subscribe with cash, or you can chuck some bits at me, or you can donate money. Um, or you can just watch for free. But thank you, thank you, thank you. Who else did the warm up? People we're going to see later on. We're going to see Mackenzie Crook. Thank you, Soap Dodger. Wow, the subscriptions are coming in. It's almost like you're enjoying this. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You're going to see Mackenzie Crook. You're going to see Alex Lowe. Jimmy Carr doesn't go on screen, I don't think. You're going to see Dom Jolly. Um, I can't think who else you're going to see in terms of presenters oh the, the 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 woman and i can't remember her name and i do apologize who played alan partridge's assistant she came on and did something um she came on and did something robert pop up you're going to see thank you very much indeed um uh, i can't remember who else you would have seen as on screen drunken christ thank you drunken christ for the bits much much appreciated felicity montague flora thank you for the subscription a very very kind of you um can't think who else and this will be part of the joy this will be part of the joy is going through it because I don't really remember it I was stoned a lot as it went on I was never coked up when I was doing the show but cocaine became a more important part of my life because I had money um and and and, and it was kind of um it, it kind of took over my anyway you, the cocaine will become part of it um I think we're done. If you're if you're listening to this as a podcast, it means I have uploaded this as a podcast. You would be very very welcome to come and join us uh, live um, Sunday night, uh, eight pm. We're going to do an episode a week, and sometimes we might break it up a little bit, and we might um, um, Sunday night. Oh, then we might and um, we might watch things that connected with the eleven o'clock show, but that aren't necessarily eleven o'clock show. Uh, Ian Royce doing warm-up back then. He didn't work on the 11 o'clock show. No, no. David, are you going to open your channel up? Do you want to raid or should we go and raid someone? Um, also, I'm going to put upload these to YouTube. Thank you. 339 viewers. Pretty constant throughout. David, you get your channel up. You let me know when you're ready and we'll do a little raid on you. Um, uh, and I will be playing games throughout the week and I'm going to be doing other shows throughout the week. But Sunday night, Eight o'clock is going to be our 11 o'clock show time. This is weird for me, right? I haven't seen that show in 22 years, right? This is weird for me. It's uncomfortable for me. It's not as uncomfortable as I thought it was going to be. I'm actually finding it quite cathartic watching this. It's laying a lot of ghosts to uh, rest. Um, so yeah, I'm finding it quite helpful. Thank you for the bits, Kathy. That is appreciated. Yeah, we'll do thumb candy. We'll do thumb bandits. We won't do those on a Sunday night. Um, if you have enjoyed it, please do come along, follow. It's free to follow. If you want to subscribe, it's free. If you've got Amazon prime, if you can't afford it, you can't afford it. That's the way it goes. If you stick around, as soon as I see that David Babcock is live, 
we are going to go and raid David Babcock's channel. Player unknown, thank you very much for the bits. It's appreciated. It would be great if, you know, there was some money to be made out of this, but, you know, it's actually, it's, it's kind of therapy uh, for me. Uh, yeah, I'll be playing games in the week. And um, I will be, I mean, I'll be playing tomorrow probably. If I get up in time, I've got to be out. What time is my voiceover? My voiceover is at two. So I've got to be out by one. If I'm up in time, I will be streaming tomorrow morning at 11. Probably streaming more BBC micro games because I've got a BBC emulator. Um, but eh, otherwise, I will see you at some point in the week. Do follow. Follow me on Twitter. The voiceover is for a TV channel. Raid the David Babcock. You're welcome to join. It's very silly stream. Very funny. I enjoy it a lot. Thank you. Bit belchy there, sorry. Thank you everyone for watching. I really, really appreciate it. Really kind. Fills my heart with joy that you're interested in all this stuff. Um, I will see you later on. Thank you very much. Goodbye. I ran up the stairs. Oh.